In this video, we're gonna learn how to make an informational cookie consent from scratch. We're gonna build that in three simple steps. First, we're gonna create our cookie consent UI in Webflow. Then we're gonna add attributes to our cookie consent components to give them superpowers. And in step three, we're gonna add the FinSuite cookie consent script to our project. This is going to be so easy that even my grandma would fail at it. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first thing we have to do is build our cookie consent in Webflow. So to do that, I'm gonna start by adding a div block that's going to be our banner component. So I'm gonna add a div and I'm gonna give it a class of cookie banner, okay? And I would like it to follow us when we scroll through the page. So I'm gonna give it a position property of fixed and I'm gonna make it stick to the bottom right corner like so. Then I'm gonna add 48 pixels of padding and I'm gonna add a margin of 48 pixels as well. I'm gonna give it a white color and I wanna add a box shadow so it pops out from the background a little bit. I'll give it a blur of 30 and this looks too dark so I'm gonna reduce this value to 25. Okay, this looks good. And inside of that I'm gonna add a heading. This is too big so I'm gonna change it to heading 3 and I'm gonna write this site uses cookies. Okay, and below that I'm gonna add a paragraph. Now inside of that paragraph, I'm gonna simply copy and paste the text that we have in the example in our documentation. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna head back to Webflow and I'm gonna paste it here. Now, make sure to change this link over here to your own privacy policy. You don't want to link to FinSuite's privacy policy. Okay, you set it here. And below that, I'm gonna add a button and I'm gonna give it a class of button. Okay, I'd like to change the color to a reddish color. Let's say here, I'm happy with how this looks. I'm gonna give it a border radius because why not? And I'm gonna increase the padding here to 24 pixels. Now, this looks a little bit awkward because the whole component is spanning from left to right. So I'm gonna give it a max width of 768 pixels. And yeah, this is looking good. And then if we wanted to, we could add a silly Lottie animation on top here. So I'm gonna simply do that. I'm gonna add a div block. I'm gonna call it Lottie wrapper, like so. I'm gonna set the position to relative and I'm gonna put it all the way at the top here of our cookie banner. Inside of that, I'm gonna add a Lottie animation. And I'm gonna set the width to 128 pixels and the height to 128 pixels. I'm gonna move it here until I'm happy with it. Uh, sorry. I'm gonna set the position to absolute and I'm gonna make it attached to the bottom left and I'm gonna give it a negative uh, position of 44 pixels. And here I'm gonna push it a little bit lower so I think 16 pixels is gonna look good. Okay, I'm happy with that. And here I'm gonna increase the top padding a little bit so it doesn't look awkward. Okay, I'll increase it to 80 and what I wanna make sure is also to increase the Z index of our cookie consent so it's always on top of all the other elements that have a Z index of one or two or three. One important thing to note here, by default, our FinSuite cookie consent script will set the display value of the banner to flex. So you wanna make sure to design your cookie consent banner with Flexbox. To do that, you can simply click on Flexbox and choose 
vertical and align it to the left. Okay, once we're happy with how this looks, we can preview it. And this is how our cookie consent will look. Now, the next thing that we have to do is add attributes to some of our elements to give them superpowers. We're going to do that with the cookie banner component first, and we're going to give it an attribute of FSCC with a value of banner. Okay, so you want to make sure to add this attribute to the cookie banner. You hit save. And the next thing we want to do is add an attribute of FSCC close to this button. Like so. We're going to hit save. And since it says button text here, we want to change that to great. Oh. Okay. Now, there's one more thing. We don't want this cookie banner to be always visible because it's bothering us and we don't see what's behind. So we're going to set the display value here to none. Note that the flex values that we added will still be here. They don't disappear. As soon as we change the display value to flexbox, the direction and the align values will be as they were before. Now we're going to set this to hide, as I said. And we're going to save this as a symbol so that we can easily add it to other pages as well. So we're going to click here on symbols, create new symbol, and we're going to call it cookie consent. There we have it. And let's say now we wanted to add this to our privacy policy. All we have to do is drag our symbol instance in there, and that's it. The last thing we want to do is go to our project settings, and under custom code, we're going to add our script. So if we go under setup here, option one, at the bottom here, we should be able to find our FinSuite cookie consent script. So we're going to copy that and we're going to head back to Webflow. Right over here, I want to make sure I paste it here at the top. Okay, I'm going to hit save and I'm going to publish our site. As you can see here, our cookie consent works like magic. If we close it and we refresh the site, we should not be able to see our cookie consent anymore. And there you have it. That's it. Let's sum up what we just learned. In step one, we learned how to build a cookie consent component in Webflow. In step two, we added magical attributes to our elements. And in step three, we added the FinSuite cookie consent script to our project settings. If you found value in this video, then please consider subscribing to our channel so that we can notify you whenever we release a new video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Check out more FinSuite videos to keep learning Webflow.